Hi, my name is Sean with MakerBot Learning. Silicon molding is a really powerful technique if you're looking to make many of an object or make something in materials not supported by your 3D printer. In this video, we'll show you some of the best practices associated with creating a mold around a 3D printed part and then casting into it. To create a mold around a 3D print, you'll need the following. A 3D printed mold box, hardware and keys, the master, or the print you are molding, silicone, resin and optional dye, cups for mixing and measuring silicone and resin, mixing sticks, mold release spray, hot glue or cyanoacrylate, funnel, X-Acto knife, rubber bands, tape or straps, gloves, a respiratory mask, and eye protection. First, we will show you how to create a mold around a 3D print. For our print, we chose the top to a perfume bottle. Here you can see the printed part versus the parts created using silicone molding. When pouring the silicone to create your mold, you need to create a box or container to bound the mold. You can use foam core board, Legos, or a cup depending on the size of the model. We decided to 3D print ours. Our mold box included a printed pour spout. If you're using foam core or Legos, you'll need to make room to pour resin when creating your mold. You can use a funnel to do this. The silicone molding process doesn't require any special settings, so we chose our default settings in MakerBot Print. Spray all mold components with mold release. Your model will need to be suspended in the mold. You can suspend your model using printed sticks like the one shown in gray. You can also use toothpicks, skewers, or popsicle sticks. Using super glue and activator, you can glue the sticks to your model. Once you've suspended your model in your mold, spray the entire form with mold release. This will ensure your model can be removed from the silicone mold. Now that you've prepared your mold box, you are ready to select and prepare your silicone. We chose a two-part silicone that needed to be measured before pouring. We found the volume of our mold by pouring water into it and then pouring that water into a measuring cup. For best results, we recommend you do this in a room temperature environment. Once you have measured evenly, pour both parts into the same cup and mix thoroughly for two to three minutes. Be careful not to mix too quickly, or air bubbles will be created which are harmful to your mold. Be sure to look for the pot life of your silicone. This will tell you how long after mixing the parts together, you have to work with the silicone before it cures. Our pot life was around 3 minutes. Thoroughly mix and pour the silicone into the form you have created. We recommend starting the pour at one corner and slowly pouring until the silicone reaches the top of the first half of your mold box. Once poured, we inserted 3D printed keys which will allow the mold to fit together once cured. Depending on the mix you've chosen, once poured, the silicone may take between 4 and 48 hours to cure. We used a quick cure silicone that took only 75 minutes to cure. Your mold is cured when it is fully solid and no longer tacky to the touch. Once the first half of your mold is cured, you can repeat this process to create the second half of your mold. Next, remove the keys, spray the poured mold and mold box with mold release, attach and secure the second half of the mold box, Mix and pour silicone until it reaches the top of your mold box. Once both halves of the mold are completely cured, you can disassemble the mold box and remove your mold. Now that you've removed the mold from the box, inspect it for any air bubbles or deformities. If there are air bubbles on the surface of the void, 
they will be present in your cast part. Once you've removed the mold box and inspected your molds, close the mold and secure it. It's essential that the mold be sealed properly, otherwise resin will leak during the pouring process. We plugged up our vents with wooden skewers. We used rubber bands to hold our mold together during pouring. Next, mix your resin. Typically resin will come in two parts, a resin and a hardener. These should be stirred separately and then mixed together. Again, observe the pot life of your resin to understand how long you have to work with it until it cures. Our resin's pot life is three minutes. Pour the resin through a funnel into the hole of your mold until it is completely full. Then let sit to cure. Once your resin has cured, you can remove the form, spray the cavity with mold release, and pour again. You can repeat this process using the same mold until you notice irregularities or quality issues in your part. At this point, it might be time to remake the mold. The more care you put into creating your mold, the longer it will last and the higher quality part you will create. You've successfully created a mold around a 3D print and can recreate your model in varying materials and quantities. You just learned how to take your prints beyond the build plate. If you're looking for more applications, check us out at MakerBot.com or on our YouTube channel. And remember, if you try this at home, share it with us on Thingiverse or social media. We can't wait to see what you make.